Hello everyone, I'm Kent, and I'm one of the pastors here at Harvest. At Thanksgiving dinner, my mom had this tradition that before we carved into the turkey and dove into the mashed potatoes, everyone around the table had to share one thing for which we were thankful. I don't really remember this tradition from when I was a child, but I do remember being really annoyed by it when I was a self-centered teenager, because this was not part of our daily routine, so it was awkward. Plus, I like to eat my food hot. And I didn't want those steaming mashed potatoes to become this cold lump on my Thanksgiving plate. So here we are with Thanksgiving dinner within smelling distance, and I want to revisit my mom's tradition. But I want to see if we can agree to make it a part of our daily routine and consider expanding this tradition to 365 days all day long. Let's begin by looking at what appears to be a nearly inconceivable exhortation from the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the believers in Thessalonica. He says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As a teenager before the largest feast of the year, I had difficulty taking two minutes out of my self-centered agenda. Rejoice always? and give thanks in all circumstances? That seemed outrageous. But that last clause, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Wow. It appears that God wants us to give thanks to Him in all things. Like maybe He realizes that if we're actually trusting Him as our good, good Father to provide for us and to protect us at all times and in all things, then our natural response will be to thank Him because we know that he's got this. Let me share a couple of quick stories around thankfulness from my post-teenage years. As a young husband and father, I wanted to discover as many ways as possible to bless my beautiful but tired wife. So I volunteered to be in charge of our children's bedtime routine. In addition to blessing my wife, I also wanted to train our children to look toward God. Each night, after their pajamas were on and their teeth had been brushed, and the predictable but fruitless stall tactics of I'm thirsty, or I forgot to hug mom. The final part of our bedtime routine was praying. For me, this presented a monumental decision. I had to decide how I was going to teach my little children how to pray. This was going to establish in their hearts and minds what prayer was supposed to look like, and it was going to shape their view of God. I still believe that this may have been one of the very best decisions that I ever made as a father. I knew that I didn't want to use the rote bedtime prayer that I had grown up with as a child. Instead, I decided that our prayers every night would simply be a laundry list of all the things that the children wanted to thank God for from their day's events. The kids soon learned that even though dad would not give in to the stall tactic of, I need another drink, he would, however, lay there for as long as they could recall the various events, people, and possessions from that day for which they wanted to thank God. I laid there for a long, long time on many, many nights. But I wanted to instill in my children the habit of thanking God for every good and perfect gift. Believe it or not, over time, this routine also helped me become more thankful and a little less self-centered too. We've asked some folks around Harvest for things that they are thankful for. Here are some of the things that they have said. I'm thankful for Legos. I'm thankful for good smelling candles. For fried liver and onions. I am so thankful for iced coffee. <laughs> Dessert. I am thankful for animals. I'm thankful for a cozy couch and a warm scarf. I'm thankful for movie trailers. I'm thankful for good books and iced coffee. I'm thankful for dark chocolate. I'm thankful for Christmas music. For my espresso that I can now make at home. I'm thankful for cool new music gear. I'm thankful for a new knee. I'm thankful for the vineyard gaming community. I am thankful for Travel and Leisure Magazine and Cooks Magazine. I am thankful for indoor plants. I'm thankful for fantasy football. I'm thankful for my baby sister Ida. Thank you, my grandma. We are thankful for each other. I'm thankful for my connection group ladies. Woot. I am thankful for a warm house. For my friends that I walk with every single day. I'm thankful for my, my mommy and my daddy. That I have the best wife in the world. I'm thankful for access to health care. I am thankful for my family and my small group. My wonderful family. 
I'm thankful for time with my wife in the midst of quarantine. Our thoughtful church leadership. I'm thankful for prayer. I'm thankful for God and the small things. I'm thankful to be part of a church that loves to worship through music. I'm thankful for my son, Ren. I'm thankful for the beauty of God's creation. I'm thankful that God still chooses to partner with us. My second story is much different from my first. I also learned more about thankfulness from the inmates at the Bremer County Jail. Unlike my children who had this long list of good things to thank God for, many of these men had experienced great hardships, many of their own doing, as well as other hardships that were outside of their control. But I learned from some of them that their strength came from following this scripture that implored them to give thanks in all circumstances. It was incredible to witness year after year how different were the lives and attitudes of the men who thanked God in all things, even for the difficult circumstances in their lives, in comparison to the men who either compartmentalized God or blamed God or blamed others for all their troubles. All of these men were incarcerated, but some of them were free from bitterness and rage and unforgiveness. It was inspiring to see the power of following God's design for their life, even when their lives were not following their desired script. Scripture reveals in several places how Jesus approached thankfulness in all circumstances. You probably recall that before feeding the 4,000 and the 5,000, Jesus first broke the bread and gave thanks to God for it. But more incredibly, do you recall that on the night he was betrayed, before laying down his life for the world, Jesus also broke bread and gave thanks for it. He knew that he was going to die, yet he still gave thanks. He knew that his father's love and his father's plan for him were good. My prayer for you and for me and for our loved ones is from Psalm 106. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. May we all grow more aware of his goodness and his blessings today and every day. And may you have a blessed Thanksgiving. Oh.